and welcome back to Anton Math. Now, uh, continuing on with our discussion of arrangements or permutations, uh, in the last video we talked about permuting a set S and looking at all of the permutations of the entire set. So in this video we're going to look at what if we look at the number of permutations of subsets of S or, or of smaller permutations where all of the elements in the permutation are taken from the set S. So let S be a set where the order of S equals S. Recall that this notation here just, just means that there are S elements in the set big S, S being a number, big S being a set. Then P S K, this is a function, is going to give us the number of permutations of S where each permutation is of size K. So in other words, we're going to look at the number of ways we can have ordered sets of K elements from the set S. All right, now what before when we had the set A equals ABC, we were looking at all the different ways that we could write ABC, all the different orders we could write that. Um, but we want to look at, for example, let's just say I had my set A from the last video, and I just want to look at the number of ways I can permute two of those elements. So the number of ways I can list only two of those elements, and all the number of, all, including all the different orders in which I can list them. So let's take a look to see what this function is going to be. So let's say, let's let my S um, be this set of S elements. I'm going to denote those elements x1, x2, all the way to xs. Uh, I don't know that I'll use them, so we'll just know that there's S elements. Now clearly we have that ps1 is equal to S, and sometimes you'll see the notation, it's actually the notation I use more commonly, S big P1. But this means the same as ps1. Well, this is going to be little s. Why is this going to be little s? Well, what this is saying is, is how many permutations are there where each permutation contains only one element from the set with s elements, right? Now, each of those permutations is just one element. So x1 is going to be one of those permutations. x2 is one of those permutations. xs is one of those permutations. And that's it. Every element is going to be its own permutation. And no elements can be present in more than one because then it would have more than one element, right? We have these s single element permutations. Now from there, we want to know how many, how many ways there are to do um, S or PS2, or in other words, how many two, per two permutations are there from the set with S elements, or how many ways can we take two elements out of the set S, and also in how many ways can we arrange those elements. Now we can figure this out based on what PS1 was. PS1 was S, so I had these S elements, X1, X2, x3, and so on, all the way to xs. These are my permutations of size 1. So I want to know how many permutations I can have of size 2. Well, for x1, or for all of, all of my permutations of size 2 that start with x1, I can have x1, x2, or x1, x3, or any of these all the way to x1, xs. And I'm not going to worry about x1 being the second element yet, because that's going to happen down here, right? So for x1, for my single choice of x1, there are s minus 1, two permutations, or permutations of two elements. So this is going to be s times s minus 1, right? I have s1 permutations, and for each of those, they're going to be the first element in s minus 1 permutations of size 2. Right, So x2 is going to be in the permutations with x1, I'll have x2, x3, I'll have x2, x4, etc., all the way to x2, xs. And continuing on in this way, we see that ps3, well now all the permutations of size 3 are going to be all my permutations of size 2, and then for each of those permutations of size 2, I can put a third element at the end of it, and there are s minus 2 remaining elements that are not in any particular permutation of size 2. So it's going to be s times s minus 1 times s minus 2, right? Now, in general, if we have p s k, where k is less than s, or actually even if k is equal to s, this is going to be s times s minus 1 times s minus 2 all the way to s minus k plus 1. Right, that's what we saw here. When it was S3, I went all the way to S minus 2. So if it's SK, I'm going to go all the way to S minus K plus 1. And it's just going to be this product of all of these integers. Now continuing on all the way down, when we get to PSS, this is what we did in the last video, right? We're looking at all the permutations of every element in the set S. 
Well, this is going to be s times s minus 1 times s minus 2. And I'm going to keep multiplying all of these consecutive integers all the way down to 2 times 1. And we have a special denotion for this. We call this s factorial. Now what this factorial symbol means is I'm taking s and I'm multiplying s by s minus 1, by s minus 2, by s minus 3, all the way down until I get to 1. So I'm multiplying s by all of the integers that are less than s and greater than or equal to 1. We call this s factorial. Now with this notation of factorials, we can actually write what we had over here in a different notation. This permutation in general for any s and any k is going to be s factorial over s minus k factorial, right? And that's exactly what I have here on the left because if we expand this out, on the top I'm going to have s times s minus 1 times all the way down to s minus k plus 1 times s minus k factorial, right? s factorial just means I'm multiplying by s by all the integers less than s. But if I multiply it by all of them, then at some point I'll get to s minus k plus 1. The next smallest integer is x minus k. And I'm going to multiply by everything else below that as well. So I can just write that as s minus k factorial. So then over s minus k factorial, we see this clean cancellation. And we have exactly what we had over here on the left from what we derived out um, with this general formula. So this right here, this is going to be the formula in general you're going to want to remember for PSK, or the permutation function. In a set of size s, this value is going to be all the possible ways that you can order k different elements from the set s. And those aren't the same elements, of course. It's if you take any k elements and arrange them, that arrangement is included. It's counted by this function. Okay. Now we're going to do some example problems in the next video. Uh, there'll be word type problems, kind of real life counting scenarios, where we figure out with this permutation how many ways there are to do something uh, something particular, and we'll see you there.